Welcome to the GCN Tech Clinic, where we aim to answer your bike tech and maintenance related questions. As ever, you can submit your questions down in the comments section below using the hashtag AskGCNTech. And this week, Connor and I will do our best to answer as many of them as possible within the allotted time. So, first question, Connor. Here's right, one. here we go. Grizz Rock send this one in. Hi, does GCN's resident bike washing guru, aka Ollie, have any tips for cleaning bikes without using water? Here in northern Finland, winter is coming and the temperature will pretty much stay below zero 24 hours a day for five to six months. Months. Uh, so washing outdoors with a hose is impossible, and no, I'm not allowed to wash my bike in the shower. Currently, I use wet, bike, wet wipes with a frame fork and wheels, and a spray-on drivetrain cleaner, which just wipe off with a damp cloth. So it's not really ideal. Wet lube, no wax. Sorry, Ollie, and me. I'm a big wax and fat at the moment. Um, any dry cleaning products I should know about, especially for the chain? Yes. Uh, first, though, I would say, yeah, I wouldn't actually advise using wax. In your riding in those cold conditions, too cold. It's too cold. Like yeah. the, so, the wax, the behavior of the wax actually changes with respect to temperature. So when you start riding in really cold conditions, it gets really hard and really brittle, and it. I don't believe it performs as well. It feels like it takes like almost forever to break in the chain, and the chain is really noisy with the wax on it. I would use a, a, a wet loop, um, like an oil-based thing, definitely in, in lower temperatures, um, as I think that's going to be superior. The other thing is with regards to the cleaning you spoke about, um, wet wipes are a great shout. And where, are, where have they gone? Where have the gear wipes gone? The gear wipes have gone. The gear wipes. Who's stolen our gear? Oh, they're there. There they are. Yeah, um, this, is, this is what you need. Oh, there we go. So... These are bloody great. Silka make these. They're called gear wipes. You can use, you could just use wet wipes um, as a thing, but these are like special wet wipes for a bike. So they have a special formula on. You can use them on your chain. You can use them on your frame, but they're actually what makes them special. And a lot of people didn't re don't realize this. I actually have been using these for years and actually didn't read the instructions. I didn't realize this, but they're two-sided. So they have a rough side, which is really good yeah. for like, your chain um, and removing more like harsh dirt but then on bits that you don't want to scratch like you don't want to cause little micro scratches and abrasions on your frame um, they have a smoother side as well so this is the smooth side and this is the abrasive side um, which is really really cool um, and they're really useful and they're not like sort of nasty on your hands or environment yeah, I, really have the, I have the individual ones in a pack I just chuck my bike bag when we go on on shoots yeah have, a, have something there. there we go Right, next question. Hang on. While Ollie tries to get <laughs> the wife's back in. Um, I hope that answers your question, though. Um, so the next question we've got here isn't technically a question. It's a response to a load of uh, comments that were made in the last week's show to do with people um, causing components to rust by putting them in ultrasonic cleaners or solvent baths and trying to clean things and leaving them and then they come out rusty um, or people worried about damaging things in ultrasonic cleaners. So there was a whole bunch of these comments. We'll, we'll flash a load of them on screen now. But what I just wanted to address was the fact that in all like liquids pretty much that you will use in this situation, oxygen is present within them. And so when your chain rusts or your cassette rusts or whatever component you're cleaning and it develops rust on it, that is a chemical reaction that is between, it's the formation of iron oxide and, and it requires the presence of iron, which is in the steel, and it also requires the pr presence of oxygen, which is in the air. But oxygen is also found in liquids. So the way to think about this is that gases dissolve into liquids. It's why when you have fizzy water, it has um, carbon dioxide in it, and that's what creates the bubbles. Yeah. So in the same way that when you pour like a teaspoon of sugar and it disappears into tea or water or whatever it is, or salt, um, gas molecules can dissolve in there as well. So there is often oxygen present within um, these liquids and solvents and that's what would cause rust if you left it in there long enough over time okay. so that's just why you sort of shouldn't really and then you should take things out and make sure that they're either stored in a nice dry environment or they're or they're coated and with regards to um, sonication or ultrasonic cleaning as it's also known um yeah like again you, you just don't want to leave something in there for a long time um because yeah it will just continue to sort of uh, sort of erode away at it and so try and dissolve it yeah um and so 
uh, uh, you're not supposed to actually put your hands inside a sonicator because it would actually sonicate your bones uh, and dissolve them. True story. Really? Yeah. But anyway, so just cool little chemistry thing is that whenever you do chemical reactions, often things are very sensitive to the presence of, say, oxygen um, in, in the reaction. Like you don't want that there. And so you actually have to do a lot of special preparation of liquids to remove oxygen with various different lab techniques to make solvents pure, just the solvent. Often distill things, dry things, all sorts. But yeah. It's uh, just so you're aware. Oh, yeah. um, anyway, next question is from Pembrokeshire Dan. Pembrokeshire Dan. Yeah, Dan from Pembrokeshire. Yeah, he says, I recently had to retire my old Garmin um, and now have a mm -hmm. Wahoo Element Roam that's bleeping. Is there a way to customise the bleeping? Um, I know I can turn them all off completely, but some of the bleeps are actually useful, such as when I'm approaching a junction. Um, so he wants some of the bleeps, but he doesn't want all the bleeps. Is there yeah. a solution? Connor? Yeah, there is. Yeah, this is an easy fix, actually. Um, so if you go to the Element app, once your um, Roam is connected, um, you can go in there and you can see all the settings. So then you can, you can choose which kind of bleeps you want to hear for certain things. Um, and you can like totally customize that for, for what suits you really. So yeah, it's quite an easy fix. Um, I would recommend. Get yourself on the companion yeah. app. Yeah. yeah sort it go. out. Yeah. Um, next question. Uh, yeah, so this has been sent in by Annetted380. Or maybe it's Annette D. Annette, or Ann Ted. Yeah, <laughs> could be. <laughs> anyway, uh, the question is, I have an S-Works SL7 was going downhill at about 80k an hour. Bloody hell, that's wow. faster than I go. Yeah, this is when the bike started to wobble. I could hardly control the bike anymore and almost crashed. Is this an indication that there is something wrong with my bike? What could be causing such a wobble, so speed wobble, yeah. basically? Speed wobbles are a fascinating thing. Um, have you ever experienced one? I have, yeah. I have. I'm trying to think what I did, what I do to stop a speed wobble. I would, would I brake? Probably slow down. You brake, yeah. Brake. So <laughs> what causes a speed wobble is there are various oscillations happening within the bike as it's moving along, right? And what happens is, is these oscillations, these, these, waves of, of things happen of, of motion harmonize and so that you get several things harmonized together so that could be if your wheels aren't weighted or if there's like an oscillation a slight vibration happening through your frame that's generated through the road surface and then through your body everything these sort of vibrations these oscillations they harmonize until it becomes this amplified oscillation which then translates into a wobble on, on the bike. Yeah. So there are various, usually it's like a perfect storm that causes all of these things to harmonize at this same frequency. So the, anything that minimizes vibration in, in the bike is, is going to help stop this. So it could be your tire pressure was, you know, if your tire pressure was different or if you weight your wheels, um, a lot of people ride like unweighted wheels and it's not, it's often not a problem, but you know, you can balance wheel balance by putting little weights on the opposite side of the valve and balance the wheels. Things like that can help. Um, also, just it could have been the road surface of that particular descent you were on just then all came together to form that perfect sort of yeah. mesh of frequencies that then um, everything harmonised together. So yeah. it, it's a kind of, yeah, difficult it's, thing. It's also worth, I think, checking your headset. Making sure your that too, is yeah, really tight yeah. That's come a bit loose. Yeah, um, yeah. Definitely check your headsets tight as well, because often sometimes people develop a wobble, and that is often a principal cause. But yeah, it's, it's scary though when it happens, and you feel it happens to you. Um, it's happened to me a few times. It's always like if you're in a race or a bunch, you'd often see it happen when you were like people were eating. Yeah, like, I had one hand off the bars. You know, it's really fast descent, like hundred k an hour, peloton, yeah. and you're like. It's an easy moment to go in food and you like you see the ball. Like, oh. So one one time when I've had it before, I was descending um, a mountain and I did start to feel this wobble coming through the bike. And I would just put close my knees yeah. and clamp my knees to the to the top tube mm. to then like 
just it. just dampen the top tube. Yeah, that's good. Um, and that's something that you can do that can help. Because the dangerous thing is it can like get out of control pretty quick. It like starts small and, and start to slow down. Yeah, <laughs> and just like yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, hope that answers your question. Next up, right? I've got one for you, Connor. I've got a question yeah, for you. Go on then. Right, here's a question from Drew E eights who yeah. says. Um, I wondered if you've got any recommendations for bike security while bike packing. Um, he, he has a kryptonite lock, but it weighs two kilograms, and he doesn't want to carry that on a bike packing trip. Yeah. Um, and he's also using like a, a really nice bike. It's nicer than the bike he would take to the shop, so he's a bit worried. What, what do you recommend? Yeah, so what I'd say is get something like an auto lock or hip lock, actually make them as well. They're like basically like really burly zip ties with a bit of a lock in. Mm. Um, like if someone's really intent on stealing your bike, they're probably going to get through them, but it's going to slow them down and it's going to be like a good deterrence, especially if you're just nipping into the shop to get a class on. You can see your bike. No one's going to just jump on it and ride off. Yeah. It's going to take them a while to get it out. But it's so light, it's like basically like a zip tie, basically. Yeah. Um, so I'd recommend something like that for those like quick pops into shops, yeah. but not leaving it in full sight. The like thing is, the is like, the, unfortunately, there isn't anything substantial enough that's going to be worth taking that's that's not going to be really heavy and annoying. And I think it boils down to you either bike pack with someone else, so you can always have one of you looking after your stuff. If you're bike packing solo, I, I mean, personally, I would just like factor that into where I stop to get something. Yeah. So you are you, you you I wouldn't go into like a massive supermarket where your bike is miles away and you can't see it. Like I often put my bike just where I can sort of see the the window of the shop or like where I can see it and the shop's not a big shop so I can always see the bike yeah. and I know I'm only going to be in there for like five minutes and I also wouldn't or petrol station's good because often or gas station you, you can often just see. put your bike by the screen wash and the logs outside and go and grab something yeah. and they're often not like I wouldn't do it in a dodgy area if, if you you know busy, what I mean like you can assess area. an area if it's dodgy and it's busy like I wouldn't or yeah. and know. sometimes I like, when you're bike packing, people can be so accommodating. And I, I would often just bring my bike into a supermarket and like ask the checkout um, person if like, they'd mind if I leave my bike there while I just grab some. Bits. And if they say no, um, take the wheels off your bike, put it in a trolley, and push it around inside of yeah. the supermarket. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, but there you go. Right. Um, next question is from Danny Hayerman, who says, I recently bought a smart trainer. I run 48 tooth chain ring on my road bike does this smaller ring affect the power and distance and speed on say zwift what will the effect be on speed power and distance if i put a 52 ring on or use my gravel bike which has a 38 tooth ring on um he uses an elite duretto smart trainer okay um it will have an effect to a point Mm. But what I would say is turn your trainer difficulty to like max on Zwift. Yeah, you can just change it. Yeah, in in the game. Yeah, and which then you don't have to worry about like yeah. changing your component. Yeah, just uh, adjust the trainer difficulty within the actual game itself. Yeah, and that'll accommodate for that. Yeah, and just tailor it to wh where you want it to be in relation to what gear you want it to be in. Yeah, and that's the best yeah. shout I think. Yeah. Uh, next question is from Yoda ninety one, who says. How many watts do you actually use by ha oh sorry? How many watts do you actually lose by having a saddlebag on your bike? I know that bigger saddlebags can be more aero, but I had this discussion in another forum, and some people didn't give any number on how many watts you were losing. Um, but they said that you they could noticeably feel the difference between not having or having a saddlebag on their bike. Um, me, myself, and I cannot feel the difference, and I usually ride an average of around 30k an hour. If someone can say that they can feel the difference of a saddlebag, right, I'm, I'm calling porky pies. I don't think you can feel the difference. Oh, you could have a massive one, to be fair. You could have a big old burly thing with like... Yeah, but when we've been to the wind tunnel and we've put massive saddlebags on the back of bikes, we've found that that is more aerodynamic. Really? It, it, yeah, it fills... It fills um, there's often a, a big area of low pressure directly behind your bum and the saddle, and it fills that void. 
So it's quite hard to tell then if you've got one or not. Yeah, so a bigger saddlebag, yes, <coughs> more aero. A smaller one might, you know, like a, a very small little bag, might slightly disrupt the airflow of um, an aerodynamic seat post ever so slightly. But that at that point, the air is very turbulent and down, downstream anyway. Like the, the, the air flow, um, what's do, what the air is doing becomes a lot less important in that area compared to the frontal areas like your forearms, your hands, your head, your shoulders that are cutting through the air in the front of the bike. So, so we're saying our answer is marginal, no, no it wouldn't noticeable difference. It wouldn't bother me at all. Like it would only bother me for like a hill climb, and I want to save save, save a bit of weight. Yeah, but yeah, like if anyone says that they can feel that, then I, I don't believe they can. They they might feel it. Yeah, but no. Okay. Right. Moving on to Rono Rono Horono Horono. Hey gang, I live in a small apartment in London. My girlfriend won't allow me to store my bikes inside over winter. However, we do have a balcony. Is it okay to keep my bikes covered on the balcony throughout the winter months? Would additional layers over the bikes minimise potential issues? Lever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> no, seriously, massive red flag that. I would stand for it. No. Yeah. I mean, you just got to weigh it all up, really, haven't you? Yeah. I would. Girlfriend's I would, yeah. bike. I would, I mean, there's a lot of very effective like indoor storage solutions that look good as well. And things where you can do it tidily out the way, like on the back of a door yeah. or like, you know, things where you can hang things vertically or thing, you know, all sorts of things where you can do it out the way. Um, and if it is a really nice bike, yeah, like I don't want to store it outdoors. Like if you've got an expensive bike, like. <sighs> yeah. I mean, if you are pushed. And you, you really do love your girlfriend. Mm. And you have to put it on the balcony. Uh, oh, uh, it depends. Like, I stored my bike on the balcony when I was in France. Yeah. But it was covered. So if it's covered and the elements above, mm. it's not too bad. Yeah. Um, you can get a decent outdoor bike cover to wrap it around it just to give it a bit of added protection. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Personally, I'd say it's all right. Yeah. I say if it's covered, I think it's all right. Yeah, as long as it's not getting absolutely like soaked every night. Yeah. But the just having that, yeah. But yeah, it's a tricky situation. It's a tricky situation for you. Um Rono Crono. Rono. Good luck. <laughs> uh, yeah. Right. Uh, well, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for this week. So if we haven't got around to your question, sorry, um, but be perseverant. Uh, keep the questions coming and hopefully we'll get around to answering it in the future. Remember, hashtag AskGCNTech. Um, and we'll see you next time. Yep. Thanks, Love everyone. you. Bye. Bye.